Hello, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to give you our review of the movie. Uh, Mirror, Mirror. Starring... Uh, Julia uh, Roberts. Arnie, uh, Arnie Hammer. Billy Collins. Uh, Michael Lerner. Nathan Lane. And Mira Willingham. Oh, with special guest appearance by Sean Bean. Yeah, that's as true. The as the king. Yeah. But, uh, we were, now, this is a movie we've been waiting for for a very long time. Yeah. Because well, last year we had heard about several different Snow White movies coming out. Yep. Yeah. And a TV series. And you had the opportunity to, you you had the op you've had the opportunity to meet with two of the, uh, of the three Prince Charming. Well, this was not Prince Charming. It's Prince Alcourt. Alcott? Alcott, yeah. Yes. Which is, you know, so they, Prince Charming is not really mentioned much in this movie. <laughs> and they said, I had the chance to meet him. It's like actually converse with them, talk to them, yeah. um, take pictures, yeah. and, you know, like actually visit with them. And, and she knows Army Hammer, so. Yeah. She'd known Army since Army was a little squirt. No, he's a great he was being. bigger than that. No, but the problem is when you get to be an adult, you tend. In his case, he, you know, what is it? You know, like a, he's built like an ox. <laughs> he, he's substantially that's larger. What, than and that's what the wicked queen says. He's built like an ox. <laughs> Otherwise known as <laughs> Julia Roberts, who was, but delightfully conniving. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, like I, I've referred to this movie as. Um, as Snow White meets the Three Stooges, uh, meets Babes in Toyland with Tommy Sands and Ed Funicello, and uh, Ray Bolger as the as the bad guy, and Alice in Wonderland with the Queen of Hearts and the Mad Hatter, and mm -hmm. the Mad Hatter and the uh, Rabbit all rolled up into one. You have to you have to see the movie to see where the Mad Hatter comes in with the Rabbit. Mm -hmm. It actually is thrown into the movie, so. Mm. But um, <clears throat> we, we went last night and we we saw it. Basically, the audience had a you know we we seen we didn't go to a previous screen we were invited to because we couldn't get in because there's too many kids. Mm -hmm. So it um, which is it's being uh, based is being released as a family film. But in, in my opinion, or actually, both opinion, it's not a family film. It's a kids film. Oh, see, there's a difference. When we think of family films, we think of everybody but from the family goes. Yeah, it's like, you know, right. what happens with a children's movie is generally the parents or brothers and sisters drop the kids off at the theater and then they go somewhere else. Well, this is one of those films that you can take your kids to where there's no sex, right? The violence there's no is, cuss words. The violence is all comic violence, folks. Mm -hmm. There's all, nobody gets killed. From the dwarfs that are standing, right? I mean, nobody. The dwarfs gets, on stilts, the blow, the blow up stilts, yeah, the, right? The beast in the movie doesn't even get killed. Mm -hmm. You know, he becomes happily ever after. And even the wicked witch. Now we're not going to tell you the whole story, but everybody still survives. Everybody survives. It's um, the the best way to describe it. it it's 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 silly. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's you know, like the only problem I had with the comedy is the fact that that. There are actors that are meant to do slapstick comedy. There was, uh, for instance, uh, uh, a good actor was uh, to do it was Carol Lombard could do slapstick comedy. So could so could um, uh, uh, the actress Jean Arthur or um, even Barbara Stanwyck could do strap slapstick comedy. In Mel's, it was like in the movie industry, it was Cary Grant was the king of slapstick. In, in television, it was Dick Van Dyke and John Ritter. Slapstick is not the same as doing comedy. They're doing, they're, they're just doing broad, farcical slapstick. And, you know, I, I don't think people are used to seeing slapstick comedy on the big screen either. No, it's not, been, it's not really been done in a long time. And it's something that, okay, um, it, it ta there's a, it's a timing to it that has to be... You basically, you're born with that ability. It's not something you can learn. Julia Roberts has done comedy. And she has the timing to do comedy, but she doesn't have the comedy to do farce, the timing for cars for comedy. I don't think Army Hammer has ever done comedy. So this is a new one for him. So he's doing, he's basically doing it like an actor. And he actually, okay, we'll put it this way. There is a puppy dog scene in there that he really is good at, so. He <laughs> sort of goes silly. overboard in the puppy dog scene. <laughs> it was yeah, very it's silly. Really puppy, it's silly. It's, uh, like I said, um, you know, um, children enjoy silly. <laughs> It's like I said, it, that's why I, I, I sort of put it like, you know, um, Babes in Toyland, which is also done on, one got done on sets, 
the um, the there's a whole movie is done on the sound stage. The Baby Tony was done on sets the sound stage. Uh, so by Alice in Wonderland, basically the, uh, the you know the, the main stuff was done on and um, and uh, there's three Stooges and it meets Snow White or Snow White with three Stooges. That was all set stuff. This whole mm -hmm. movie was done, I think they said, on three different sets only. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's kind of pretty amazing. Oh yeah, when you figure, but they're using the same, you know, because they go to the same spots over and over again to make it. So, but the, but um, uh, it, what we did was we the photography was magnificent. Yeah. And it had a musical a score job, by the one of the Menken brothers. That, that one of the Menken, I think he writes for the Disney Company a lot. Mm. But basically, it was, it was the, the the music was was. Fantastic! If you want to hear, you know, kids want to hear good music. Go to that. The music basically fit the tempo of what was happening in the movie. Yeah. And the sound editing. I mean, okay, I can tell you honestly, there were times when you heard the knock on the door. I turned over to see. Oh, you know what? I did too. I turned. I would turn over to see. Are, are you hear a bell ringing? You look, but who's the idiot with the cell phone? Oh, it's a because yeah. what you basically the sound was so good that you thought that. You were in the same room with the sounds. It actually, it actually was kind of funny. I did that several times too during the movie. Oh, it looked Even good. though you know you're watching the movie, it's just. But it's all of a sudden reaction. you hear the knock, 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 and you go, huh? Oh, it, that's on the screen. Or you hear you hear that ring, 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 and then you, you know, like, where the SOB with, oh, there's a there's a thing ringing there. So it, that's when you you know that they're, they're, they're done a lot of work. I mean, it, the movie's estimated to costing a hundred million dollars. You could see what a hundred million went. Because we, we actually... When we, especially when we saw the credits roll at the end. Oh That's gosh. where you saw it. I yeah. mean, there was people working on that thing you would not believe. Well, it was funny because when we're watching the movie, I'm like, there's not really that many cast members in the movie. No, but um, a lot of what happens is not the cast members are doing job. I think most of the soldiers were the same people all the time. Mm -hmm. But they're wearing helmets, you can't tell, but they had very few listing of soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they had very few, like they had a ballroom scene, then they had a marriage scene, and then they had a crowd scene. I did recognize faces in the crowd scene during the ballroom scene. Mm. That's what I do for a living, folks. I, but that's how I, I would, um, an example was, I was in Spartacus. I, because I, I, I rode horses, I actually was a Roman in Spartacus, and I was one of the one of the people fleeing in one of the slaves in Spartacus. So, but no, the movie is on the the cost is setting on the screen totally, and it's setting there where you mm -hmm. can see it. But, um, but um, you know, it is a good kids movie. It is. There's well, like you're saying, there's a lot of silly moments that I know that. They'll have, especially the puppy dog scene with no, Army Hammer. the puppy Hammer. dog scene, the kids will really love. Right, and, and the dwarfs that, what they thought were giants that are actually dwarfs on the blow-up stilts. Yeah. And he says, oh, you're just children. <laughs> yeah, that that was another kid scene. The, um, the most, okay, most of the sight, fight, violent sight scenes are all funny. They're not meant to be taken in a serious grain because nobody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens after every single time that they lose the fight. You'll have to watch the movie. The We're scene, not going to tell you all. No, but the very same story. thing happens. In the, <laughs> no matter who it is, the same thing happens. But, um, you know, but uh, we, you know, it, it, it was a good movie. I mean, for instance, I mean, uh, here's the thing. We just, we, we, we try to value whether a movie is worth seeing or not. I mean, it, the question is, would I pay to go see the movie myself. No, I'm an adult. But the problem is, I, you know, I had, I had kids. Would I take the kids to see the movie? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. probably, I'd probably better have them see this one than go see uh, The Clash of the Titans, which has got awful violence and lots of other things. So, it's a, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a family movie in extent that you, you know, that if you're going to take, you know, if you're a single parent, you go take the kids with you, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you end up going over to see Clash of the Titans, and they go over to see this. If you notice carefully, Clash of the Titans ended up playing at the same theaters. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I got to see it because, first of all, I've been waiting to see this for a very long time because we've been talking about Snow White, and I wanted to see Army Hammer in this role because it's a different type of role for him than he's, um, than he's been seen in. But for kids, I think it's ideally perfect. Well, yeah. yeah. It, just like I said, it, it's like... Um, Okay, it was like you had the Three Stooges in the movie. Actually, it really is like you had the Three Stooges in the movie. Yeah, it said you get seven dwarfs. You get seven dwarfs. I mean, it, you like got, half pint. You and have wolf. you have Three Stooges type humor going on all the time. The only thing that didn't have in the movie was a you know, it was a pipe.
pie fight, isn't that something? Oh, they did miss the pie fight. I know, that's the, that's the only thing they forgot. They got the puppet fight. Yeah, but um, there was something that really did bother us at the end of the movie, though. You know, that, like, it's like... It was out of place entirely. For me, and I'm thinking you're thinking of the same spot, it was totally out of place. This is when they're doing the screen credits. Is they start playing Bollywood music and do Bollywood dancing at the end. Oh, I knew. I mean, uh... I was just okay, like... Okay, well, put it, it, I Okay, Tarsim, I know you did Immortals, and I know you did I know, Bollywood. I know, comes from Bollywood, but... Uh, and I know, but still, the impression uh, uh, of Snow White. I mean, I can, I can see... Um, I can see... Julia Roberts, because Julia Roberts, you know, she's done something with a good musical beat and basically shook her butt to it. Army Hammer just looked a little bit out of place in a musical sequence, and really out of place is, is a Sean Bean. He does not look Billy like... Billy pulled it off, though. No, oh, she's got a good... You know, well, her father's Phil Collins. She's got a really... She's got the music. She, she basically can dance, and she can sing. And she can sword fight. Oh, and she can sword fight. Well, and there's another thing that bothers me. And Army can sword fight. Okay, Army's really good with the fencing, but Army Hammer probably, you know, he's like, like my family. I mean, my, I learned because my grandfather went to Heidelberg, so I learned the better arts. See, I, because I'm doing this, I'm actually left-handed. So, but, um, but Lily, okay, where in the hell was everybody getting this, you know, warrior queen stuff with Snow White? <laughs> yeah, this continues the idea that Snow White was a warrior queen, which is still kind of foreign to me. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I don't get, I don't buy that, and I don't think the kids are going to buy her as a warrior princess. Well, so they changed this. They, did they change the script? They changed the whole focus. Well, oh, it basically, um, it, it, I think it went from a dark, it, it went from dark to uh, a, 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 a silly comedy is what it mm -hmm. went to because the, the what it is is they have the Disney Company on ABC has a dark version of Snow White, and the uh, the there's even a darker version featuring Kirsten Thomas and Kristen Stewart, Christa, Kristen Stewart, and uh, Charlize Theron. Yeah, Charlize Theron and um, uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth and, and Sam so Claflin. That's going to be an even darker <laughs> version. Is it? Yeah, it's uh, and she's also a warrior princess. I mean, it didn't. It's not Snow White that I grew up with. I grew up with. I mean, I mean, most of the people actually, most kids, no matter. Okay, okay, it's just like. What makes Disneyland Disneyland because it's a place for kids of all ages? Snow White, it, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is something that everybody has seen. Everybody has seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And what happens is when you tamper with something, I mean, the gentleman as the director of the movie is from Bollywood. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that he gave it a vision of what Bollywood would turn a fantasy into. Yeah, I think that's what happened. And in Bollywood, they soundstage virtually everything except, you know, they'll go out on location to do intercuts. So I think you've got a Bollywooded idea of what Snow White should be like. Mm -hmm. Which is, okay, Bollywood is ungodly beautiful clothes. Bollywood is magnificent photography and great music. That you saw Bollywood everywhere in Snow White and, in, in, in Snow White in Mirror Mirror. Mm -hmm. It is a Bolly. It just is all Bollywood. But the trick is, you know, what it's. It, my questioning is, it comes out at the wrong time. Yeah, but it comes out right before Easter break. No, but it comes out. Okay, they didn't count on Hunger Games being as a big a hit hit, but they also comes out the same week as. The, Clash of the Titans. Yeah, but wouldn't you have a different audience for Mirror Mirror than Clash of the Titans? No. You've got, you've got kids. Mm. Kids. And, uh, you know, and teenage kids. What happens is the teenage kids, here's how it's going to work in, in my estimation. The teenage kid, you're going to have, Mom, I don't want to take my little brother or little sister. I want to go see Clash of the Titans. Well, you're not going to go see Clash of the Titans unless you take your brother and sister over to see Mirror Mirror. I don't want to see Mirror Mirror. He said, take your brother and sister and see Mirror Mirror. So what happens is the kid takes his brother and sister and drops them off in Mirror Mirror. He goes over to see Clash of the Titans, and then he tells his brother and sister, you know, here, here's five bucks, go have extra popcorn and stuff and wait for me until I get done with the movie. Mm -hmm. um, we did that back when I was young, folks. I did not like taking my sisters with me to movies. So I would tell them off. It's, I yeah, don't, especially yeah. if you were going to look at girls while you were at the movies. Yeah, yeah. our girls are going to look at boys. They don't yeah. want their little brother or sister. So it's, uh, this is why one part of it I said, it is a silly movie. 
Silly movies are aimed at children. They're not aimed at teenagers or adults. Mm -hmm. Gee, okay, um, uh, adults do not buy silly movies unless it is really broad stuff. Okay, adults love the Three Stooges. If it had been, um, um, I mean, Army Hammer and and Army Hammer gave it what he's got, but he is not a slapstick comic. He's a good actor, and he shows that he's a good. He's good, athletic, and he has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. You have to, to do. You have to do to do. Puppy. You have to to do a puppy scene, yeah. Scene and be the pants hanging by your toes. Con yeah, so, by your feet. But, you know, so but um, like I said, you're basically in once again in our review, would you pay to go see the movie if you had to pay to see it? Oh, only because I really wanted to see this movie. I'd probably go see a matinee. <laughs> yeah, no, she wanted to see it, but because I've been looking to see it for it for a very long time. You know, I'm, I'm a generation, a few generations ahead of her. But I, while I wouldn't pay to go see the movie by myself, I would take my kids to see the movie. There's the difference. It is a kids' movie. It's a good place to go. There. It's harmless entertainment, and basically, it's old style. It's vintage Walt Disney is what it amounts to. Vintage Walt Disney, not the Disney you see today. Yeah, because like the Disney ending was, well, actually, was happy ever after. Yeah, and this was you know, the new beginning. New beginning, happy ever after. Yeah, and it's basically with the the good guys win, the bad guy loses. Yeah, the good guys that you saw, right? And nobody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. It is vintage. It is vintage Disney. And if the relatively media managed to pull something off, which really isn't able to, or not able to do easily, which is to pull off something that the Disney company used to do with flawless thing. I mean, uh, that, you know. Well, you know, it's always difficult, I think, reinterpreting a classic. Well, you, because you don't touch it. <laughs> no matter what you do, you can't help but being compared to the there, first. There is right? nothing that, okay, when you take a classic, there is nothing that you can do that is right. Because totally it, yeah. nothing that you can do that is right because you're going to offend somebody. Mm -hmm. What happened is, is that I think the director may be a little bit smarter than a lot of the people give him credit for because he's targeted his movie. He knew who the audience would be and he basically shot for that audience like a laser point of view and he put the thing is in there to make the kids happy. The yeah. adults aren't going to give a rat's ass about it. But, the kids. but you know what? This is one I could see where the kids would replay it over and over and over. Oh. Did you see that? See, that was really silly. Okay, it'll be kids will yeah. kids will get it on video on, on DVD or whatever it is. So if you have watch. a kid, just be prepared. You're going to be hearing these lines over and over. And over. Oh God, you got to hear. There are catch lines in there that will be okay. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna first of all we're gonna tell you they're gonna be calling. They're not gonna call her Snow White. They're gonna call her Snow. Yeah, they did call her snow. Very seldom. The Snow White was only used like Snow White is dead. Mm -hmm. Most everybody knows Snow White didn't get killed. So Except for the Queen. No, the Queen. <laughs> okay. Everything okay, we're putting it this way. Everything that is, you know, in Snow White is actually there, but not exactly in the sequence that it's supposed mm -hmm. to be in. So and uh, the the characters are just supposed. I mean the characters are not characters are not exactly like they're supposed to be. But um, the trick is, we're used to seeing the Disney version. I, I understand there's the 20 versions of Snow White done. Are you serious? Yeah, because it's a, it's a public domain thing, I think. It's a, so, uh, but, oh, it, it's, it's, you're not going to, you won't waste your money going to see it, which is, um, uh, you know, if you go with your kids, good. If you don't go with your kids, just as long as you brought the kids, I think they'll be very happy over the coming of the producer you know, because it was aimed at the kids. It says they designed over 300 costumes. To be worn by the film's extras. Um, yeah, because uh, because the extras are basically the same people over and over again. So they got to have costumes. We have mage, we have guest at the uh, at the balls. We have soldiers, and we have um, and the townspeople. So you can figure out through 300 costumes. That's not a whole lot of costume changes per person. I mean, uh, the queen only changed costumes a few times. You know, uh, the, the prince is, you know, what well, usually Prince Charming changed, uh, was it three times, I think, or something like that? Mm -hmm. So, um, or four times. But, and then, um, let's see, Snow 
uh, changed costumes uh, only three times except for one sequence where she had multiple costume changes. Yeah, when she was doing her fighting things, but once she got into her white she stayed. outfit, she was in that for a long time. Yeah. Although I did notice that like when she was running, it started getting dirty at the back, and then yeah. sometimes it wasn't quite as dirty, and sometimes it's dirty. And I noticed, uh, they also noticed there was some costume plugs because it's sometimes, okay, we're trying to, we're, we're, we're looking at a change in structure of where the movie was going. Mm -hmm. Because you could tell by the fact that sometimes her chest was showing a lot, and other times then the chest is totally vanished. Well, and off, and also when you're watching, you can tell when the poor areas, the peasants, it's dark, it's dreary, the colors are, it's like, they're like hanging, right? Yeah. Like and dirty. And then the people that have the money, right, or the royalty in the magical world, it's colorful and huge uh, yeah. and oversized and broad. Uh, and and okay, it's going to be god awful popular with the Occupy Wall Street movement. Why? The, well, the one percent are those people, you know, the dwarfs. The one percent of those people are in the city. The you know the, the no the ninety nine percent are the people in the city and the dwarfs. The one percent is the royalty that doesn't care what's going on anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It, but it wasn't a political movie, but it will be made to be made political. But there will be, I can give you a, a catch line to the movie that probably will be popular. What? They, they, uh, they did nothing but sing and dance. They said, didn't anybody in this kingdom work for a living? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not a movie about Snow White. This is a movie about me. Well, I, actually at the end, yeah. right, the mirror breaks. Mm -hmm. It says, yeah, this actually was a movie about Snow White. Yeah. So it does have some phrases the kids will remember because they are they are very politically correct phrases. So. But um, I guess until we do our next review, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information? You can go to www.montybubbles.net on the net or uh, www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And also, if you've been watching, we've been doing 3D, 2D, as well as live streaming. Yeah. Right, so you can always keep up to date with us. But thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet.